Good morning, folks. Today we're going over the big earthquake, more climate nonsense of the sensational nature, a quick story on Venus, and a first look from Hubble at a quasar jet. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. It was a mostly quiet day again. We continue to have small M-class flares that are impulsive and otherwise not been able to release coronal mass ejections. We've got eruptive potential for sure and a coronal hole stream likely on the way. Let's take a peek at these, starting with the sunspots. They are not tremendously numerous or large. Magnetic complexity is mild to moderate only in the trailing group to the left, but it would need to develop further for larger flare events. When we take a peek at 94 angstroms, it reveals where that flare is occurring. White flash is the M-class this morning. We'll be watching these areas for further development and flaring. We're also just a couple days away from impact from enhanced solar wind streams from these dark coronal holes. Earlier in the week, I thought the stream might even arrive by today, but it's looking like Sunday is a better bet for it now. Geomagnetic conditions have been forecast to have only minor unrest. We'll see ourselves in the next couple days. Now, the big story yesterday was the magnitude 7 earthquake off the coast of California which came with a completely unnecessary tsunami warning that did scare a lot of people. I will say, if the tsunami center has to choose between sending too many or too few tsunami alerts, sure, they should play it safe and send the alert even when the risk is very low, like it was yesterday. But it's worth you knowing, tsunami never even crosses my mind for a magnitude 7. It's around magnitude 8 where that starts to be relevant, and for the big devastating tsunamis, usually takes 8.5 or higher, unless there's some kind of landslide or volcano associated with it. Just something to keep in mind. Up next, folks, try not to laugh. For three decades, the world has been hearing things like this, the end of ice. Dozens of predictions have already failed, and now a couple eager beavers suggest we've only got three years left. If you're not laughing and instead legitimately contemplating the possibility, stop. It's nonsense. Up next, scientists are now cutting down the early wet Venus hypothesis, where long ago it wasn't scorching and actually had liquid water. They say here that that's almost certainly impossible with the new data, and I tend to agree, especially since I prefer Velikovsky's take on Venus as much as any other. Last but not least, quasars. Everyone has probably seen some kind of animation like this one, a major magnetic core, an accretion disk around it, and jets shooting out of the poles. Interestingly, most don't know that few actual observations of them are had outside of the radio wavelengths. This is a visible infrared and UV look at the quasar from Hubble where you can see the jet clearly. This is one of the best actual shots of a quasar ever taken at these wavelengths. Got major events coming up at Observer Ranch the next three months. UFO and Solstice Party is eight days away on the 14th with special guest Adrian D'Amico. We've got many conferences coming the next two months. Check your calendar. Pick a time. Come see us. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.